Oh, hello. Welcome to a somewhat neutered edition of the Beat is Beat. Get to that in a moment, but there's some new Dark Souls DLC to tackle once we read some yield beat poetry. This is, or will be, uh, Crown of the Old Irony King, the second in a series of three delishes. That's uh, how you say DLC. It's delish. Delicious game content. Why don't they say that more? I'm kind of lost on that. But here's a little bit of pre-lore, in addition to some reviews of the poems were left by other players in front of each one. But let's bow down to the snakes and... Read about the halberd. And voila! Very similar to the first one, Crown of the Crunken King. Expensive moneybags DLC, you teleport to a place and you're treated to a door that you may or may not be able to open. And you got your summon sign room, much like was in the first DLC as well. You can place your sign there if you want to wait in the waters a bit of the DLC without shelling out the uh, $500 it costs to get it. You can lay down a sign, get summoned at a certain point that you'll see much later. But if you got the key... Notice the character never inserts the key into the door. Does that... For a lore-heavy game as Dark Souls is, that... It takes you out of it when you don't see the character actually put the key in the door. I've opened my share of doors, folks. Unlocked cars. I don't think there's any cars in Dark Souls, but it's the same, the same principle. It just takes you right out of it. So what I really like about the DLCs, the delicious up to this point, is the scenery you're exposed to the moment you come out into the area. The first one you saw that big... Shady fortress here. You see that big old bright fire tower thing the Chain bridge going across. It's just a it's a good image. It just gives you it's like hey look at this Look at what your investment got you, buddy. Huh? Huh? That that's the front people going like eh? Huh? Quick transition since I had trouble finding the smelter wedges when I got them. Here's the lore behind the sticks that we picked up for your reading pleasure. So you'll notice from the way I'm talking and the the edits, the subtle edits I'm employing in this, this is not being streamed. It's not being streamed. And I'm not sure where that parry noise came from. It's like the game knows how fantastic I am at all aspects of it, obviously. Uh, pro MLG and it just acknowledges that by saying, like, we know you're going to be hearing this a lot, so here's our props to you, successful parry sound. I'm not streaming this because this is the first edition of the Beatus Beat that you are hearing from the new Beatus Digs. The videos that you've been seeing up to this point were gradually uploaded. They were all done around the same time, but then spread out. The love was spread throughout a period of time. I was absent for a little while, had a lot of things to do, had to move, had to leave the south for the more literal south of Texas. But one, uh, here's the soul of Nadalia. Part of it, that is. So Nadalia is spread onto all these, their souls been scattered to all these idols. And these soldiers, the dead soldiers we saw when we came in, one successfully drove the smelter wedge into an idol who was here before this character was. And yeah, it's a dexterity ring. Are you a min-maxer? Maybe you'll be a fan of this. I don't know. Min-maxing's kind of pointless given the leveling system and soul memory thing that Dark Souls still has. Deal with it. Anyway, in the new Beatus Digs in Texas, Texas, my internet upload speed has been compromised severely. It's maybe 15 to 20 percent as good as it was in the old Beatus Digs. The download speed is fine, but they really cap you on the upload speed. Unless I were to get. Ooh. Forgot this happened. 
see, I'm not one of those Dark Souls players that is, you know, plays online for walkthrough purposes. That's not the real experience, man. You gotta see scores of blood pools and orange scribbly wobbly text on the ground in order to really experience this game. There's the first proper enemy. That was to intimidate Gabrielle Vault. To thinking like, hey, you stabbed a guy like double my size with double my weapons in the back. Maybe I should not pursue her this. That's a pursuer joke. Everybody paying attention. This character's got a lot of vigor, which is nice, and a speedy weapon. So if the person you're fighting has not so great poise, and you get a couple hits in on that, you can combo that shit. And it's quite nice. Anyhow, as I've been saying since I think this video started, Internet's not as good, so I tried streaming the other day, it did not work well at all. It, it If I lowered the graphical quality, then it was okay, but even then kind of iffy. So, until I get things settled in the old Beatus digs and fully complete this whole moving thing officially, I'm gonna go on the subpar internet for now. It's fine for, I mean, it, I can do everything I want on the internet, except stream, pretty much. Or if I try to upload anything on YouTube, it takes, you know, a couple of years. That's fine. Maybe you folks in the comments, because I know YouTube comments are the place to have serious discussion about pertinent issues. You know, are these offline beats acceptable to you? Or do you prefer the... the atmosphere of a live broadcast? Where... I talk to, um, what's the word? Uh, humans. Other human beings. And not myself as if someone is listening to me live. It's a, it's a, weird, it's a weird thing to do. I don't, have, why does that happen? It's weird. Or I could be like, hey, I got a video I recorded to the, to the tweeps on the Twitters. Be like, so this, I feel like I should interrupt this because note all the blood spatters all over the place. So you come in here, you're greeted with one enemy, you get introduced to who they are, it's great. Then you take a couple more steps and three of them ambush you. And if you're coming here for the first time, which if you're here for the first time you will be, that ambush can surprise you and get the best of you. It's meant to instill a sense of panic, be like, what do I do? I get multiple encounters. Dark Souls 2 throws a lot of multi-enemy encounters at you. A little too many for my taste. But with those guys, you want to ideally pull one at a time, maybe two, get your rolling on, or if you have a, one of those uh, great, great shields, great, great shields, not just a great shield, but a great, great shield. It's even greater than a great shield. Uh, the greatest shield, perhaps. Or that'd be a great, great, great shield. We can chart the family trees of great shields and know what the idea is, but if you have a great shield or a great great shield, you hold that in front of you, your poise, your shield poise is really bala, and you can kind of tank your way through it. But if you're a more dexy kind of feller, as I am at this time, then you want to get your adaptability and rolling going on. Or maybe you're a sorcerer and you got some nukes, you can do some nukes. Now this room's kind of a butthole. So these statues that you shove those wedges in they have different properties the first one threw a chaos storm at me this one might also do that i don't entirely remember but it does do something else but in the game proper alluring skulls had pretty limited use but here I'm not sure about the first DLC, but at least in this one, those big ol' enemies get distracted by them for a couple seconds. A couple seconds. And the statue... Uh, cover them in ash. Ash is a bit of a theme of this DLC. Ashen Knights. 
fire creates ash, I've heard at times. But ash also, little known fact, if you have a relative who has become ash, coat it over yourself and you'll notice you've become a lot more hardy. Uh, your defenses will go through the roof. Um, try it though, because if my character recovered an ash, that's like doing the pyromancy where you punch yourself, iron flesh, same concept. So that Nadalia idol beefed up the enemy's defenses. And even after I dealt with that problem, I still kind of did bad. But the second time around becomes a little bit easier because you don't have that initial thing to deal with. And because I thought I might switch weapons. So the uh, Esperado Repair, which I've been using up to that point, is uh, it's good, but these enemies can kind of, well even that sword they can still do that, they can kind of tank the first few hits. That's not a good thing when they tank hits. Though if I had equipped the Stoned Ring, that's the ring that tears up enemies' poise a bit more. Maybe the Esperado Repair could, um, it might stun them each time, I don't remember. But regardless, this this is the uh, Mira, great sword, or is it sword? I mean, it doesn't look great, but it's a it's a functional sword. It's a, the Mira thing. It's Lucatil's sword. It happens to be. I can't think of it, many other swords that have this sort of proper tie, but it is a uh, it's a Dex scaling great sword that has the move set. I believe it's the move set of the. Uh, Cray Cray Moor. That's the Crazy Moor. It's Cray. Totes Cray. The uh, Totes Cray Moor, the same move set of it, which is quite good. Quite good, because you do that poke with the strong attack. And that has some good range. Oh, and by the way, Dance of Fire. Not a pyro kind of feller. I don't know. Your mileage may vary with it. I think that is the kind of fires a horizontal line of fire shit at enemies. So I think it, if I'm thinking that is the correct spell, might be good for crowd control. Crowd control to Major Tom, right? But uh, not for this character. This is a boring, just weapons character, no fancy spells. Just dapperly dressed and rolling around. I like the shield a lot as well. The shield that I don't really remember how to say. I'll just call it the Lou Ellen shield. The Lou Ellen shield. Just become possessed by a poltergeist and you'll be able to pronounce the name of that shield. It's the Lou Ellen shield. That's how you pronounce that. Again, nice, nice scenery. Lots of ash. In case you doubted that the door-looking stone fixture was a door, read them messages. DLC also has scattered pots of water. As everyone who's rolled through a pot of water knows, when you do that, your fire defense skyrockets. Or not, I don't think it's skyrockets in Dork Souls. I think it just kind of nominally increases your, uh, your defense, perhaps. Has there ever been a Fashion Souls wet t-shirt contest? Just think about it. I don't know. So, DLC in general. Oh, and these enemies. I like those guys. That's a good enemy. I-M-O. A very trolly enemy. They don't... I don't think, with maybe a couple of exceptions, they don't really attack you outright. They try to lure you to bad stuff, but, well, luring doesn't work so well when you don't actually follow them. So those arrows just kind of chip through them, but 
if you have fire arrows, or any kind of weapon that makes little sparky sparks, then they'll blow the hell up. So while they are trap-based enemies, you, yes you, the playa, can use them to your advantage. You can uh, guide them to where you want to go and ruin an enemy's life, which you might. Given the skill you've seen so far, you might just see that later. It remains to be seen. So the DLC in general. I'm a fan. I think I liked the Crunken King one maybe a smidge more. This DLC feels maybe a smidge more milk toast, but it's still the level design, the gameplay, the fun factor is a, is up there beyond most areas of the vanilla game for sure. It's just, uh, you know, it gets maybe one kind of, you know, whatever thumbs up or at the very least the DLC from me gets a shoulder shrug of approval. It doesn't get my passions up by any means, but it's like, yeah. If you play Dark Souls 2, play this. Why not? It's fine. It won't blow away your whole universe into orbit space, but it's solid. Just solid. And I kind of like towers in games. You know how in those old RPG Final Dungeons there would be, you know, this... Or, you know, Zelda, you had the Gantz Tower, or the Tower of Hera, I think it was called. Towers in video games are pretty cool. Towers, in fact, are so good in video games, there's a whole genre devoted to defending them. You tell me towers aren't cool. The market has spoken. Okay? Don't know why I got so passionate just then, but trust me. Okay. So we got from Bonfire A to Bonfire B. We got some Twinkling Titanite, which the both DLCs have quite a lot of, because the main game did not have a lot of them at all. Thanks from Software. Again, the market speaks. There's a demand for Titanite, so the market of developers provide... Okay, bye.